Okay, so today's video is going to be about the different types of plate boundaries and what landforms or what happens at those boundaries. So, remember from our last video that the space between tectonic plates is called a plate boundary. So when you have all those different chunks of the lithosphere that is broken up, there are little gaps between um, each of the plates where they fit, kind of like jigsaw puzzle pieces, and those gaps are called plate boundaries. Now there are three different types of plate boundaries and it depends on what way the plates are moving. So the first type is convergent and that is where two plates are moving towards each other. So if you have two plates, they're moving towards each other. Divergent is kind of like divide, so you're splitting those plates. So these plates, if they're divergent and they're dividing, they're moving away from each other. So you have two plates side by side, and then they're moving opposite directions, so they're going to slowly pull apart. And then the last type is transform. And these, um, the amount of space between them is not changing. They're moving in directions like this. They're sliding past each other, and they can create friction um, between the two plates. So convergent moves towards, divergent is away, and transform is past each other. All right, so the first type of plate boundary we're going to talk about is convergent. So if you ever learn the word converge, it means to come together. And so convergent plates are coming together. And they are where two plates are moving towards each other. So you have two plates again, and they converge, they move in the same direction towards each other. What happens at this plate boundary depends on what type of crust it is. So remember from a previous video that you can have continental crust, and that's where the crust is thicker, and that's where the continents are because it sticks up higher. And you can also have oceanic crust, which is thinner, and that's where the oceans uh, live because they're thinner, so that's where the water uh, settles. So you can either have oceanic or continental crust. And so what happens at this boundary depends on what type of crust you have. So if you have both oceanic, so both plates are carrying an ocean, so oceanic and oceanic, this is an and sign if you're not familiar with that. Um, oceanic and oceanic, so you have both plates have an ocean on them and they're very thin and they're moving towards each other. Or if you have oceanic and continental, so one plate has a continent on it and one plate has an ocean on it and they are moving together. So either both oceans or one of each. The heavier plate sinks under the other one. So the oceanic plate is going to be the heavier of those two plates. If you have two oceanic plates, then it just depends on uh, the makeup of that plate. So on oceanic and oceanic, it can be you can't really tell exactly what's going to happen. If you have oceanic and continental, the oceanic crust is heavier, so it will sink underneath. So what happens is you have these two plates that come together, kind of like this. Say this one has my ocean on it, and this one is the land. They come towards each other. This one is heavier, so it's going to sink down underneath the other, uh, the continental plate or the other plate. So when that happens and it sinks, this is called subduction. That's the process of that happening, it's called subduction. And the area, so this area, like right on the edge of this plate and over here, this whole area right in here is called a subduction zone. So subduction is when it sinks underneath and a subduction zone is that area where it happens. Um, what happens is this crust that sinks underneath here, this goes back down into the mantle so remember that these plates are the lithosphere, and then down here is the mantle, mantle or the asthenosphere. So the plate sinks, and then this part is down in the mantle. It gets hot, and it melts. So this part's not going to be there anymore. And so there's an extra amount of uh, melted rock or magma right here. And because of that, we tend to have volcanoes at these um, plate boundaries because these two are coming together and there's new magma being formed here. And sometimes in this gap in the plate boundary, it will rise and create volcanoes. So 
I just want you to let you know that volcanoes can technically happen at any type of boundary. As we saw in one of our videos, the lines around the plate boundaries are where a lot of volcanoes happen. So they can happen at any boundary, but they typically happen at convergent boundaries with either oceanic and oceanic or oceanic and continental crust. This is where they're the most common. So what happens if you have two pieces of continental crust? So we have um, two plates moving towards each other because they're convergent and they both have a continent on top of them. This is what's happening with India. The Indo-Australian plate is moving up and bumping into the Eurasian plate over here. They're moving in the same direction. They're bumping into each other. So what happens here is uplift, which should be easy for us to remember because it's on my shirt. So uplift creates mountains. So it's not a coincidence that at the exact location where the Indo-Australian plate is running into the Eurasian plate, that's where the Himalayas are and that's where the biggest mountains in the world are. Not a coincidence. So these move together and you get uplift. And that's what happens when the plates come together when it is continental and continental at a convergent boundary. So those mountains are going to rise, 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 and just keep getting taller. So those are convergent boundaries. This is the only boundary where different things can happen depending on the type of crust. So this one has a little bit more detail to it. The next type of plate boundary is a divergent. And remember that's where two plates are moving away from each other. And magma rises and fills in the gaps. So we have our two plates here. One's moving to the left, one's moving to the right. And in this gap that's created when they move apart, the magma down here in the mantle or stenosphere rises up and fills in that gap. And then it hardens and this becomes new land. Okay. This is where we have trenches. So a trench is a really deep um, like crack basically in the earth. And so trenches can form here. And this also tends to happen in oceans. So a really good example of a divergent boundary is the North American plate is moving away from the Eurasian plate. And so as they move away from each other, magma rises and fills in the gaps and creates land. And then they become a little bit further apart and it rises and creates new land. And that land is the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So if you remember, South America and Africa used to be right up next to each other and then they started moving apart. And as they did, there was seafloor spreading that happened and it created the Atlantic Ocean. So all the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean is new crust that happened in this way. So if they move apart at the bottom of the ocean, it's called seafloor spreading. And then our last type of boundary I think is probably the easiest and it's called a transform boundary. So again, with these plates, there's no, um, movement. There's no uh, change in the amount of space between them. They're just moving in opposite directions, like past each other. So imagine we have two plates here. Say this is North America and this is the Pacific plate. And this is what's happening in California. So North American plate is moving in one direction and the Pacific plate is moving in a different direction. So North America is moving to the north and the Pacific plate is moving to the south. So when they move is when we have an earthquake. So they build up a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, and then they slip, and that's when we have earthquakes. So before an earthquake, your plates are going to be just kind of chill and sitting there beside each other, and then after an earthquake, they have shifted. And so because of the friction between the two plates, that's what makes everything shake and rattle in an earthquake is those plates moving. So this is probably one of the more dramatic uh, plate boundaries because we feel the ground moving when it happens, but there's no new land being created. Um, there's not really a lot of landforms being created at these types of plates. It's pretty much just earthquakes. So you have three types of plate boundaries, convergent, come together, divergent, they move apart, and transform, they move past each other.